Uh, long hair, don't care. <laughs> Except when it's in her mouth, and all of a sudden, they always care. Um, <laughs> uh, just think of it as like a little vi- viola string, and I'm not talking about Viola Davis. Uh, even though when they get mad, they turn into the color purple. Um, <laughs> I've actually never seen that movie or the musical. Um, it seems like a classic. I'm a classic, man. Uh, but yeah. Uh, just another scheduled program in here. Uh, but, you know, as they say, for every place there is the vent. Damn, you do live in a tent. And you have two kids, so something was bent. Um, <laughs> uh, Jesus, but yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, been a questionable day. Just, you know, I just woke up today and I'm like, you know what, Clint? Put your thoughts out there. Put your thoughts out into the world. What thoughts do I have? Well, uh, you want them in groups or just uh, you find the one and only that loves to watch you poop? You know, someone, uh, someone did say that uh, it's weird. Like, when you're with a woman or when you're with a man, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know why I, I guess. There's something about getting too comfortable where you start farting and watching someone's shit. Like, I don't understand, like, the people that, like, want to watch their partner shit. Like, we all know what happens. If you walk in on someone you know, it's like, all right, whatever. But you know how like, people get way too comfortable together and they just be like all over each other, every little thing, like watching someone doing the most private things. It's like, um, you know, you don't have to watch me have my period. No. <laughs> just live with it. And then like as a guy, it's like, hey, you know, you don't have to, you know, watch me brush my teeth. You don't have to watch me, you know, just doing everyday things we we do have this weird thing where we we want to be so obsessed with everyone's life that we know you know uh i was actually listening some earlier and they said secrets is the number one killer to any successful relationship or to really just a fulfilling life because secrets just weigh on you i don't know if it's like the mental cortex whatever the hell it is if you're holding secrets when you're when you have a close relationship with someone, it kind of, uh, you know, it kind of uh, over time, it just does not. It statistically doesn't work out. And I'm like, you know, I I I get the point of that. There's some major secrets like you should not be hiding the fact that you're fifteen thousand dollars in debt to your husband. Like that's probably not the best thing. Um, but that is very common where. Just to not deal with it, not deal with the reality of the situation. It's not even like a situation where, you know, wife will max out credit cards or something. It would be legitimately just like bills stack up, fall behind. And they don't really want to tell their husband how much in debt they are. And they'll just try to make money secretly. Like, that, that is a real thing. Like, um, because it's just like you don't want to expound a bad situation if you know how someone stresses or reacts. It's like, but you know... I don't agree with the fact that I, you should never, you shouldn't lie to someone, right? But at the same time, you don't need the, t- you don't need to know everything about everything, about with everyone. Um, as weird as that may sound, now things that are very harmful to someone else's life are very embarrassing and stuff like that. Yes, obviously, when it affects someone's livelihood, they're like, I don't like. This whole thing that we got to know everything about someone's past or their exes to an extent. You should have a good idea. And you could kind of sense that. But it should never be your obsession of whatever. Because if you're judging someone from nine years ago, you know, a situation to how they dealt with something. And you see the person they are now and stuff like, like, you know, how much of that can you really take? You know, if they were young, younger at a certain age, like me, 
Someone would judge me by the way I broke up with a girl at 21 compared to like now. It would be a night and day difference. It would not be a great reflection on how much I've grown or how much I've changed. Um, or how, you know, you just mature and know how to deal with stuff. You don't get yourself too deep into the rabbit hole, you know, before, uh, <laughs> who framed Roger Rabbit? Whoever that hot, hot, what was her name, Jessie? The, they, that was the sexiest cartoon woman I've ever seen in my life. Like, it is illegal that they, they showed that to a PG audience. Whoever, Jessica, is it Jessica? That fine little rabbit. Whatever the fuck. She was like a human slash rabbit. I don't know. But you know what? It's the great epitome that men will do. Men will literally go to jail for a goddamn beautiful Jessica. Um, <laughs> trying to think if I know a Jessica. Nope, in the clear. So it's just a joke. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Nah, you know, people change. People grow. And, uh. And by the way, I know I got, but this is not a personal antidote of mine. This is literally just my life. Everything's great at home. It's just that there are, you know, you wake up with thoughts, you know, you see things on the internet and you feel need to reiterate to the world that, hey, stop worrying about fucking everything, right? Like, just go about your day, move on with your life. We, we have to wait. We think way too much about what's going on out there. I actually also found out that literally there is a, like, in contractual rules and laws for these uh, news companies, they have to report a death every single day. Or, like, they there's a minimum amount of deaths they have to report a day. And that's why sometimes you'll be seeing, like, even though there's deaths that happen every day in every state that are just murders and whatever, but, like... That's why sometimes, like, it's like, damn, we have to fit our quota. You'll see, like, a nearby state on your local news of someone who died, and they'll try to connect it, some bullshit, like, oh, and they were cousins with the deputy in Coweta County. It's like, all right, this seems kind of random. Um, <laughs> but when local stands to, I guess, local or local, regional local, as they call it, uh, but, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like we focus on everything, but everything. So yeah, I think I'm going to start the intro of the pod now. Alright, welcome to episode 251 of the Off and Be Podcast with Clint Nelson. I'm your host, Clint Nelson. Not redundant at all. Don't forget to like, follow, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, most important ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to suck some titties. Yeah, suck it, suck it good, girl. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Um, <laughs> you got it, good girl. Uh, people hate that song by Dustin Lynch, but you know I find it kind of catchy. Like, I got it, good girl, cause I got myself a good girl. Mm-hmm. He like basically just says "good girl" to rhyme three or four times in a row, and it's like you know what. Let it be, man. If it's catchy, it's catchy. And boy, a good girl is very catchy. <laughs> uh, is it, though? Because it seems like good girls, the only good girls I need are the ones that make go bad. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Do I want a good girl or do I just want a good girl to go bad? I actually don't want anything to go bad. I want you to actually just not do anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not a bad, but I just want you to don't cause problems. But yeah. Uh, recording this on January 8th, 2023 at 2.53 p.m. Eastern. Yes, another afternoon pod. Today's drink is SPL. Some would say it's, uh, was it, standard profile language. I say sour pink lemonade, goose style. The pink vulva in the can's back. And there's me gulping your vulva. Um, (laughs) uh, Liquid death. And it can. It's really just sparkling water. It's really a marketing tool. Yeah, everything's marketing. Including 
If you see the ass jiggle, oh, he'll make it wiggle. Fruit salad. <laughs> yummy, yummy. Not sus at all to say it like that. I used to love that fruit salad song, you know. You could toss my fruit salad. Um, <laughs> I couldn't tell if the Wiggles were Australian or Belgian. Uh, but as I think we could tell, they sure like the waffles, some Belgian buns. Nope, I do have a waffle maker. But uh, my uh, ego gets in the way. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I'm such a, so I'm such a nika poop. But yeah, uh, episode 251, yes, for the archives. This is for my security, not y'all's. So, what is happening? Team Jackson, what's happening? Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of negativity, right? It's a lot of uh, social experiments going out here, you know. Women finding men they love, men trapping women they love. Um, <laughs> you know, the word trap is such a bad term. I mean, it is if you're actually trapping someone. But like, so yeah, you know, like you be around couples and married couples, they'll just, yeah, I trapped her. And she'll look like, mm, that's not funny. And you're like, well, I kind of did. Think about it. I convinced you of a lie. You were severely disappointed 12 years later. I have not followed through on any of the things I promised of a greater life, of a, of being a better man, becoming everything you dreamed of. I am not even 10 to 20% what you dreamed of. But I trapped you into thinking there's more to life than just love. There's more to life than just what's out there. It's all about what's within. And then you convince them what's within and... You convince them that they need less because less is more. And uh, that's how you do it. And then if they leave you, then you're like, uh, oh, so you are a gold digger. You're not about what's in the heart. Um, <laughs> it's all a balance, you know. You know, I've talked about it before. And, you know, we've had, I think it's very, it's okay to admit that someone's not just with you for love. Someone's not just with you because of who you are. Because of what you make them feel. How you make them feel safe from the world. All that stuff is great. And it makes a part of, okay, you know what? I know if all shit falls apart, there's a foundation that I can rely on. And there's a lot of beauty in that. And that's all great and all. There is a reality that there are fiscal, there are financial, there are just things that... If these things aren't in a row, all that other stuff is just hogwash. And I don't mean the Timon and Pumbaa. Because it won't be a wonderful phase. Um, <laughs> uh, you'll be having a Kuna Batata. But it'll be a, a lot of lonely, peaceful times to yourself. Because she has left you for, you know, what's out there. Yeah. This is not about me, by the way. But I'm just saying, you know, everyone experience, you know, it takes a while for you to get to life where you're like, you know what? It's not just about the heart. It's not just about what's on the inside. All, you know, the older you get, you realize it all matters. To what degrees depends on the day, right? Depends on moods. It depends on what's going on, people's stress levels. It all matters, though, you know? It's and I think what you see we see the extremisms out there. We see the extremism of women that just flat out rely on feminism but use it to their benefit when there's financial implications, they want benefits but this and we see the extremism of the other end where it's just like you're nothing more than this. You're just a stay at home, cook my half ass and you know it's always weird, it always seems like the women that like want to be like housewives to try to curve the trend and be like, oh no, I'm traditional nowadays. And then you see what they make and it's just this lunchable bullshit with ketchup. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's always like you have all day and you can't put fucking mayo on a sandwich. God damn it. Um, <laughs> like 
you know, it's almost like it's, a, it's like, damn, you can't be lazy and lazy like Jesus. Um, <laughs> that sounded a lot worse than I meant it. But, you know, we see the extremisms out there where it's all about um, catering to our loved ones, you know, being the perfect, being the partner that no one else can be. Um, it's all about if you can't do this for me. There are X amount of people that can. And the answer to that should always be, well, then why can't you just be with them? It's really a simple thing, right? And I'm tired of coming across these videos of, I, I guess it's specifically women, because to be honest, men don't really just make, I mean, we do, but at the same time, we don't really just go out there and make videos to prove of how many bitches we can get. It's just, it's kind of understood. You can kind of look at a guy and be like, you know, this guy can really just kind of get anything, anyone he wants and not deal with any drama. So come correct. Um, <laughs> but it's always one that got to make these subtitles and all this stuff. Be like, just understand, look at all these DMs. I have to look at all this. It's like, the only reason why I don't have these DMs is because I didn't reply back. All right. Like, <laughs> you know, um, the kind of like, you understand that just because a guy doesn't have 85 DMs of it's because he just doesn't go out. He may not have social media. He doesn't really care to do all that stuff. He just doesn't want that unnecessary drama because he doesn't have time to look at 85 fucking matches. He's got shit to do. Um, <laughs> and that's the thing of the, is like you realize that a drop of a hat. A guy of a certain attraction level, a guy of certain means, a guy of a certain stature, or whatever in society, or just how they carry themselves when they are a desired figure, um, they know it, and really at a drop of a hat, they put out there, they would bag someone that is eight times as attractive as you, and also has more of a mind, has actual is actually a smart educated than I out there making videos of how better they can do because you know what people do when they can just do better then they don't tell you they can do better they just will and they'll just go about it that's really what people that do better they just do better you know and all these people on the internet that make proclamations of all these things they could have but instead they chose you or they chose x y and z it's a weird proclamation because you're basically admitting that you chose something that you admitted is less for yourself, but because it sounds morally okay, but you're basically outright speaking. You're basically outright speaking that I can do anything. I can have everything I want, but I'm choosing you, so you've got to follow these guidelines. So when it kind of goes in this back and forth, and I guess it kind of parlays that into. Asia Doll, you know, I like, I like the drama, I don't know what Asia Doll is, uh, she's a rapper, I believe, now she's on the OF, and I don't mean the only farts, um, even though I'm pretty sure you go on OnlyFans, you can find anything you want, you can find, yeah, I, I don't know, people are in the weird, you probably pay 20 buck membership to watch this eight second video, watch the air come out of my booty hole, it's like, Seems like there was a few things in it before. That's a pretty wide black hole shun. Even though there'll be no sun coming out of that because it's the butthole. I'm such a fool. Um, I didn't need to specify that. I'm such a fool. This is why these things get demonetized or shadow banned as these big influencers. Like, I'm getting shadow banned. My stuff's getting less views. It's like, no. It's because... You're trying to do all the trendy things and people see that shit and it's not what they came to see you for. So, I don't know. I just hate when people put titles of stuff that are like edgy. When people put topics that like you actually have to have a real opinion about. And they'll just have the topic up there. But you say the most basic generic like a lawyer written up stuff of something they didn't even need to have to talk about. Like, when people talk about the recent Cat Williams stuff, like, the deep, like, they'll have no real, but, like, you know, it just, I guess we'll just have to see. It's like, I clicked on your video just so you could say, I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, you know, I guess we'll have to see everyone saying 
fuck your channel, right? Um, <laughs> but no, so Asia Doll um, <laughs> has come after Myron on Fresh and Fit, you know? Um, look, people have been coming after Myron, you know? These are the same guys, well, really guy, that they cry to fit when YouTube demonetize a channel. They still show, they're still able to post on YouTube. They just, for one, can't make money off of it. And it just won't get, like, promoted in the algorithm as hard. But any of your subscribers and stuff, because they'll search you and still find it. If they really want to. Which really proves that if you're someone that people that relies heavily on the algorithm for people to want to watch you. And people don't have you in their mind when they go on YouTube to want to watch. So that people are just in you more for drama, not because you actually provide real insight that people seek out. When people seek out. They will find you without you even having to be promoted by algorithm tactics. But hey, you know what? <clears throat> what do I know? Um, anyways, but yeah, so she's come after Myron because I guess, I don't know. I think she went on the show a year or two ago or some time ago and kicked her. You know, you know how they do on Fresh Fit. They kick girls out and all that stuff, whatever. And then. She basically started trashing him on Twitter for some shit. And then he responded. And then she kept trashing by, you know, calling my whole ass bitch. You know, all that good stuff. Or talking to a woman a certain way. But when men are present, he calms down. Which, I mean, I kind of mentioned that a long time ago. And basically posting old pictures of him. You know, when he was in... Uh, I forgot what he... In the military, the CIA, whatever, training... And there's a lot of, oh, it was like college, the frat type of thing where very, a lot of sus photos of a lot of men in a hotel room, cuddling, hugging, uh, kissing on the cheek in bed, which I'm like, you know, it's one thing to have that type of environment. Like if that's the frat environment or whatever, it's like, all right, whatever, call it hazing. It's just a group bond in all male school. I get it. Um, but why do you want pictures of that taken and smiling at the camera of that? Like, how do you think that was going to go out and age well, you know? Especially the thing is, like, when you talk about the stuff and then it's like, it's kind of hard to take someone serious when they're doing all that. And then it's just a lot of this back and forth, you know? And I guess the whole drama is just the fact that everything sticks with you. Um, so you got to be very careful before you come out here trying to be... A proclamation getter and accuse people of something that your mole that you actually have proven more to be of than the people you accuse. You accuse people to be emotional, and yet the way you react to this stuff shows a lot of things. Um, I don't know anything about Asia doll. Look, typically in rap, any girl with doll, um, you know, they're talking about cash me out, cash me out. Um, <laughs> I know it's ice me out. I'm sorry. Ice me out. Uh, and I wish someone would ice me out right now so I could stop talking and actually just get out of this vortex of recording. Um. <laughs> it's not about forcing myself to record. It's just sometimes it's like, damn. It's so like some days it's like, you know, I could just like do some other hobby and stuff. And it's like, nah, you know, I love what I do. And some days like this, you just have to do what you do. And I am fresh and pretty fit. Damn, my back is big as fuck. Um, <laughs> I was surprised, you know, you ever looked at yourself and you're like, well, obviously. Um, I'm not going to lie. I did a douchey thing last night. I went to the gym, and I did not, my body was not well prepared, we can all relate, when you don't really, if you're a gym goer, and you don't prepare your body on days, it really kind of sucks, but you do it anyways, like, your muscles aren't really there, you're not really contracting much, you're kind of, eh, you go too late, you didn't eat enough, you didn't eat, you know, whatever, I was very surprised, I'm like, damn, like, I did a douchey thing, it was at night time, no one was there, so I didn't. Break one of my rules. You know, I decided to take the shirt off, you know. Work out with the shirt off for a little bit. Doing pull-ups, back exercise, 
did some triceps, did some push-ups, did some dips, and I'm like, damn, I'm really getting there, you know? I put on weight, and I've only put on a little bit of tub in the snub, or snub in the tub. You know, you put a little, little part of putting on weight in the building muscle process, if you're natural, is you're going to put on a little BF, and I don't mean, uh, what is it, bison fat? People cook their shit in bison fat. Because uh, bison, you're fat. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh and I was like, damn. And I'm not going to lie. Like, I was like, damn, like, every, I'm heavier, right? Like, I put on a pretty decent amount of weight, like, legitimate eight or nine pounds. Consistently, steadily around a certain weight now. Compared to just, like, two or three months ago. And for a period of time, it felt like I was getting a little chunky. Or you just kind of feel like shit. Working out less. But I'm working out more efficiently. But I'm putting on... I'm getting way stronger when I go. And, you know, people may be like, oh, you do. You look like you get like, yeah, whatever. You know, you feel relatively the same, but slightly different, if that makes sense. And then I went like, you know, like you have those moments like, holy shit. This is like when Chris Pratt did his Guardians of the Galaxy transformation. And everyone, when everyone was like, holy shit, bro. And like when it like really like you finally realize it like, oh, this is real what I've done. And I had that moment. I was like, damn. You know, it's like I'm putting on weight, but my muscle size is still there. And then a little bit, but I'm putting on a little, you know, a little mass, as they say. I'm not just this guy that looks uh, looks lean and looks like a certain character, you know. But you actually feel like it you know that's the thing sometimes when you feel you're not as strong as people make compliments about you puts you in this weird mind focus it's like i'm really not even like that strong but now it's like i feel like i actually am getting there so it's kind of cooler um <laughs> train your legs kids um or have her do it or have Who's ever there? Uh, I actually had the audacity of someone that asked me for a spot on a leg press. I genuinely didn't know what the fuck to do. It wasn't last night. It was last week. I genuinely, like, I wasn't even mad at the guy. I was genuinely, like, I looked at him, like, on the leg And I was, like, I genuinely, I, I even told him, like, honestly, I don't know what you want me to do. And he said, like, look, like, basically, if I start struggling, it's just kind of, like, Kind of like you would on a, you know, bench press, which kind of is the purpose. Is like when you start struggling, you know, you push the weight up a little bit. It's our forced reps. Kind of like forced leg press. And I'm like, for this amount of weight? All right. Um, <laughs> all right. And so I'm basically like my butt, like I'm literally hovered around the guy because the way the leg press is narrowed down. And after like four reps, it's already he's like, He's already like, you know, he basically can't do. So I'm pushing the thing up. It's like, this is a lot of weight to just be pushing up. Like, this this is not, this machine is not designed for force reps. And you know there's a safety thing. Where you just bring it down. And then there's a safety thing it goes on. You don't really need me. Um, But it's like, you realize you could just do like 50 pounds less and get twice as much gains as doing this bullshit and put yourself at an injury risk and i even told him after i was like hey look for something like this you're better off just like lightening the weight and just actually doing what you can do and going until failure but you know he's like oh well i well look like you know i'm doing a certain type of training and i'm like i'm like all right man you know i wasn't gonna argue i was like all right just trying to fucking help you. Um, <laughs> nothing like when you force help someone thinking you're actually trying to, you know, better their lives, increase gains, you know. But yeah, um, I guess the moral of, every, of everything about that is is um, go check out Asia Dolls OnlyFans or a rap. I don't know, whichever one 
get you get your smoochy wet uh, it was weird because she's actually from the south because she made you know you gotta make IG lives shitting on people so she's from the south which I respect because she was mentioning the thing like you know people that talk like the way they do get their well she said get their wig snatched up you know but in their case you know they get popped you know they get fucked up if it's a guy which you know that's why like you make sure you talk to people a certain correctly even when you disagree or having so because you understand the consequences of it but the internet these podcasts with extra security it's like these npc live streamers i think they call it where they go around just causing trouble but then they have their security like this neon dude and this jack doherty they're like these young 19 20 21 year olds going around literally just talking shit to people either like popping up on people that they know from the internet talking shit or just whoever in public like the jack doherty dude literally just goes into a mall runs into people looking like a fucking idiot and he's like the smallest and then people and then somebody like bro what the fuck you're doing then there's you know not even the biggest security guard just like these slightly bigger than average dudes just like it's like hey 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 you know get in between type of thing you you better st- it's like do you, do you not like you're literally letting this little i don't care what someone's paid me if i'm if i was security for a guy private which is kind of weird that someone got private security cause nonsense but because they have private security it's okay to do in public like there's no law for that like how's that even work like what can a private security actually legally do when they're not authorized i don't know um Private security is supposed to be prevent outside people from causing trouble to you. Not you causing trouble to have security there as a buffer. You're putting people's, you're putting security in unnecessary drama for no reason. And honestly, if I got hired for the job, I would let him do all this shit. Pretend for one or two that I got him. But then when he hits the wrong motherfucker, I'm going to completely back away and just let this dude get smashed. Like, let this dude get fucked up and be like, oh, sorry. That one, you you know, I don't, you know, hey, I said I would protect you, but you kind of elbowed this guy. And, hey, I wasn't going to get in between that. Um, um, I'll make sure to call the ambulance for you. You know, I'm not a douchebag, but not a bigger douchebag than you. Um, <laughs> and that's this weird thing, you know. It creates this thing where people actually feel like they can record stuff on the internet and they're protected because they do pranks or they're protected because they do, you know, they're just trying to think they're being funny, which I don't find any of that stuff funny. I don't understand how anyone really could. And there's no one that watches what he does and it's like, hey, you know, I'm going to look for this. This is one of those things that you get annoyed by so much that you watch reaction channels or commentary channels talking about the person more than ever actually watching it. But I guess that's the point. It's about making money. It's about being known for something specific. But do you want to be known for that? Like, can I understand? It's hard, like, at that age to be like, oh, like, I'm really going to think this through. And, like, it's going to be really hard to go from doing that to, like, when you're 28 and then you're going to try to rebrand an image. Because you can't be 28 going around doing that shit. You know. Because um, people will fuck you up when they realize you're older. Like they may look at them and think like. This is some 17 year old. So I got to. I can't really react all the way. It would, But people know you're a grown up. They're just going to start fucking you up. And it don't matter how much money you think you have in your private security. Because someone else is going to pull up with. Real security, if you know what I'm saying. You bump into the wrong person and then act like that after. And and tag on it. What you gonna do? Um, I might, you know, smack the bitch out of you. That's what I might do. And you know what? I would rather respond and get my ass beat by security. And at least someone show this guy, like, your security doesn't intimidate people. It really doesn't. Um...
But, you know, no one can say that we just can't, that we should just all, like, team up and jump people like that. Because, oh, that's just cause of violence. Like, yeah, but you're intact. That's like calling someone this word, that word, insulting them, getting in their face, pushing them, and then you get mad when someone, like, decides, you know, Triple H, you know, choke slam you. Like, it's like, oh, but you, you shouldn't have responded. Like, it's like, you shouldn't have done 18 things to get a reaction because you don't know what the fuck the reaction might be, you know? Um, but when literally what you're doing, there's no other reason than just you want a reaction from people. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. These live streamers that go around and do this shit. It was kind of like that one dude who, in like, I think it was in India or he would kind of go in other countries. Maybe in Thailand or something. He would just go around and like start shit and whatever. I forgot exactly, but he was just being a menace. And then finally. People started, like, fucking him up, and he kind of slowly stopped doing it, but he still kind of still does it. But, yeah, I guess the moral of all that is, is if you're going around and just trying to cause problems with people, um, you're going to cause problems with the wrong person one day. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be a month. It may be a couple years. But one day, someone's going to knock you the fuck out, and... By the way, I was watching Rocky 2 last night, and I'm going all over the place. I thought Rocky 2 was the one Apollo Creed, you know, died in. Like, I've recently gotten into Rocky. I don't know what it is. Like, I kind of watched the movies growing up, but I didn't really remember. Because, you know, like, when you there's so many movies, like, because there's, like, five, like, original Rockies, and there's, like, the Rocky Balboa, the Apollo, the Creed's, like, and... The other sub movies they've made over the years, but like the main first five, where it's like written and directed by Sylvester Stallone in real time, you know, in the midst of Rocky One is like an underrated. Well, I don't want to say underrated, but like the purity, the strip back, and just like you could tell, like, oh, this movie was just made like in the pureness of someone writing this shit down, making a story. And second one, you can definitely tell the second one's a little bit more like a. Uh, bigger movie production, but it still has that low feeling, like that good, like stripped down feeling, just with a bigger budget. Uh, and I'm kind of in this thing where I'm trying to watch like a series of movies. I actually started listening to audiobooks, like last. I say, I like I started it's literally last night. Um, because <laughs> now like they're just including all audiobooks into Spotify Premium. Like, yeah, about fucking time. I've actually been. I've been, I'll be doing, I, I had this idea in my head, as I'm going to do like a podcast episode reflecting on listening to the subtle art of not giving a fuck. <clears throat> I have friends that have had that book, and I realized after they had that book, things about them changed. And I don't think it was necessarily because like, they read the book and they had a great revelation. I think a lot of people just started <clears throat> replicating their life after it. Which is kind of a messy territory because you're just, it's just really one person's experience with some data and personal stories and the import. And I realized how pe- some people react to that. And I don't know if it's actually helped them beneficially in their life, but you know. Um, but I want to actually listen to it and do like a full, I know it's an old book, but get my thoughts on it. You know, I find it very interesting. Um, it's very, you know, I, I like the idea of it. I like the subject matter of certain chapters. I think sometimes, like, the two, I would say, like, I really, like, kind of zoned out when I feel like some of the personal examples of the chapter where at least the audiobook version comes off this way, where, like, when he was talking about, I think it was chapter three i forgot the title of the chapter but he starts talking about like when he's in school and when he was 13 uh being searched for weed and stuff and the anxiety and all this stuff and about lying and how he's trying to be deemed not a liar but he is lying and all this stuff there's a lot of value in it i just kind of zoned i was like all right let's get through the story and get to like you know whatever um but that's just you know that's just our short attention spans but but no, going back to Rocky. But no, I will be doing 
once I finish that whole audiobook, or at least like maybe when I get halfway through it and develop, I'm gonna give like a 20 minute segment towards it and my thoughts of it. Um, but yeah, do like a book review. You know, sometimes I do album reviews of shit I care about. Sometimes movie reviews. And I'll do like a book review. Some I haven't done in quite a while or ever. But yeah, this Rocky. Um, <laughs> So we're going to do a review of something that's been around literally since 1976, the first movie when it came out. Literally almost, Jesus, almost 50 years ago. In two years, it's been 48 years since the first Rocky came out. But it looks like a movie from like the mid-80s. That's the crazy part. And uh, the Italian Stallion. Um, uh, But watching Rocky, I thought... You know, because from the Creed movies, I saw like one of the recent Creed movies, like the whole thing is about, you know, his dad dying in the ring. Rocky's the one that killed him in the ring. Oh, wait, now I think about it. He didn't die from Rocky, he died from the fucking Russian guy. And that's why Rocky fights him. Damn. Sorry for spoiler alert. The movies are 40 years old. Get over yourself. Um,. And I don't know why I was. It's weird to look forward to like the part where he dies, but it's like kind of where he not where he kills Apollo because that's not what you want. But at the same time, it's like when you know the story, it's like, oh, is this the one that happens? Like you want to see it happen. Like oh, and it's like oh, they both kind of got up. Rocky won the second one. Is like oh, okay. That was weirdly disappointing that he didn't die in the ring in this one. I was like, maybe he's Rocky 3, Rocky 4, but I just figured out it's the Russian, which is why he avenges Apollo. Yeah. And that's why Creed actually fights the son of that guy. Ah, Jesus, Clint, what the fuck? I'm such an idiot. But yeah. But yeah, I'm getting into Rocky. And it is kind of, there's a weird feeling after you watch these movies. There's an inspiration you feel. There's some bad. You try to be like, you know, I have a lot of common with him. And you're like, nah, I don't really run hills. Um, <laughs> and it's crazy, like, the boxing training is insane. Like, it is a lot of, like, there's some lifting. Like, it's a lot of cardio, like a shitload of cardio. And he's not on the sauce yet. Like, he looks pretty natural, but I know when he gets to, like, Rocky four, I think it was when it starts. Like, like all right, this is when he started taking the turn, right? But, um, yeah. That whole, like, but what I liked about it is, like, it was real training. It wasn't like some, it was boxing, of course, but the most of the things were, like, outside doing, like, walking In a squat form with like this log on the back. That shit looked terrible. Like, oh my God. Just imagine, I was just imagining doing that and I felt my hamstrings. And I was, and I was still feeling sore from doing a fucking standard leg press earlier and leg extensions. And here this guy is doing like a fucking goblet squat, walking like a leprechaun for eight feet and then sprinting and running and doing these overhead sitting presses, building his back and shoulders. And I'm like, yeah, this this boxing training is a whole different thing, man. It might be, honestly, I think boxing training is probably the hardest form of any type of training. And I've never trained in boxing, done that type of cardio. Um, but that's a whole different thing of being strong and conditioned. Where, like, weightlifting is, it's a part of body. Like, you have to lift something. You have to be strong, but... Weightlifting is honestly like immensely easier. I honestly think being a bodybuilder is probably like 20 times easier than being a boxer and being in shape for that. Like being in condition for, because imagine like, like, you know, bodybuilders like, oh, they cut down their food intake. They cut down their weight for their shows that look as dry and lean as possible. Like, all right, but all you're doing is sitting and cut. Like, imagine having to be in a ring for 30, 40 minutes fighting, but you're 20 pounds higher than usual, you have no energy, but you're expected to go perform, be at your maximum strength, and not be barely hydrated, 
just recently fueled up after the weigh-ins. Like, that shit is fucking insane. Like, I think that's what makes MMA and boxing, like, a whole different level of sport. Because it's dumb that, I understand the weight class thing, there should be weight classes. But the fact that th- there should be, like, a, you, you sh- there should be, like, a, you can't, you have to have, like, a standard weight you typically are at, or clock in at a weight at a certain amount of months before the fight and you can't be doing like these 30 pound losses in seven weeks where you're just killing yourself just to make weight and people do all the time like oh i gotta make 155 it's like oh but i'll walk around like 185 it's like but all that training you did strong you did it goes out the window when you just drain yourself like it doesn't seem like you really get the best fight you know what i'm saying like why not just have like the 155 guys like be around like you can't drop more than like 15 pounds from your standard weight like that's what they should do right I don't know it seems like a weird system and a weird thing that's been normalized because it starts in the high school I remember wrestlers man like it'd be these jack rip but they would always be tired as fuck because they would always just be around like 155 pounds they would be strong, but they always be tired because, of like, yeah, I haven't eaten anything in, like, a day and a half. I can't eat school lunch. I have a couple pieces of bread. I drink nothing but water. And they'll just eat, like, some candy for some sugar, like, as weird as that may sound. Then they have wrestling practice, and they got to run two miles, like, come to school an hour early, run two miles, and stay after, and then do wrestling training. It's like, bro, like, this shit is, like, different, right? And it's just cardio. Cardio is a whole different mental game than just sitting there lifting a metal pole or lifting some rust, pulling down a tricep rope. And like, oh, this shit's hard. It's like, yeah, it's hard to make. It's the hardest part of making time to do something that's pretty stupid and monotonous, to be honest. And that's someone that does enjoy doing it. But if you really break down what you're doing, uh, gyms are typically just we have them for convenience more than they are actually like it's more just convenience and a more realistic optimal way to build muscle than having to force yourself to go outside and finding things that aren't really there you have to create like you know back in you know back in heyday you know even like 30 40 years ago there would be just tree logs all over the place open space people just go out do x y now it's like everything there's real estate there's commercial condominiums there's some type of zoning out there's no like parks are like not always like not everything is convenient so gym is a way to get convenient way to put on muscle but it's not really the most natural way the body's designed to put on muscle but you know the body only knows based off the stress and reactionary impulses you put on it and it reacts right it doesn't know whether you're doing a standard front squat or if you're you know just lifting something up and using your glutes to power it up it doesn't know all it knows is that man these my hamstrings are feeling kind of tight i need to strengthen these and adapt some muscle fibers based off the amount of consistent pressure it's putting on me so you can survive and not get hurt that's all really a gym is, is just sometimes like isolated movements that may make certain things look good, but they can't perform any real, they can't perform any real life movements. Like I, like there are dudes with, I I genuinely mean, there are guys who have like big triceps, strong triceps and shoulders. They can do crazy amount of pull-ups. And then you get them to just like lift something relatively normal, like a bed. And they're struggling with it because it's not like lifting 100 pounds, let's just say, curling 100 pounds on a straight bar doesn't necessarily translate to lifting an uneven object, to having pressure points on your elbows, having strong elbows, like. There's something about actually doing things that translate. That's why, like, the Jason Momoa thing's fascinating. He doesn't lift weights unless they're paying him to lift weights. Like, if he's like, all right, I got to put on size for Aquaman, whatever. Like, yeah. He's like, I'll work out, lift weights, and shit like that. But 
in terms of me, in terms of like me, like I'm Jason Momo, but in terms of him, he does rock climbing. He does body weight stuff for the most part. He just does, he does like not really even cardio. And dude drinks Guinness. Like, dude's like, unless you are paying me to get big as fuck like that, I'm just going to rock climb. <laughs> like, that's how I stay fit. That's what I enjoy. That's what I'm going to do. And he like surfs and, you know, that's just kind of his thing. And look at that guy. Because he's using real life situations where like, hey, you know what? Who do you trust? The guy in the gym who can, you know, do 250 pounds, the pull down machine, can do great pull ups on a cushioned, ungripped bar. Are you going to trust him to, if he has his hand out, you know, like Mufasa did for, or like, what fucking, Char, what the fuck is that? Scar, Scar. Like Scar did for Mufasa, have his hand out, but then really just, you know, let him die, let Mufasa die. Are you going to trust if you are stuck on and someone has their hand out and holding on to a fucking rock with the other arm? Who are you going to trust? The guy who's like, hey, I did 48 pull-ups in a row the other day. Or Jason Momoa, the guy who actually is using those fucking rocks to climb, his bare fingers, his hands... The dude has marks and scratches and bruises all over his body from rock climbing and, you know, trial and error of climbing and falling. Who are you going to trust if you're stuck on a cliff? Probably the guy who actually is on cliffs. Not the guy who looks like he can do some shit, but the guy who actually does a shit and, you know, looks like he does a shit as well, you know. It's imposter syndrome, you know. I, and you know, I've even fallen to that, is that, yeah, like, I look as strong as I've ever been, but I don't feel, like, as fluid, I don't feel as mobile, I feel very tight in my hips, even though I work out my legs properly and all that stuff, but something about just constantly, uh, Doing stuff on a regular basis in real life that require real body movements and translating that. Like you don't feel in finding ways to do that in a gym setting. There are limiting factors. There's just something about in real life if you play a sport. Practicing certain movements actually gets you fluidity in your knees and your legs and your shoulders. And it's like you look bigger and stronger, but you don't feel as fluid. And to make that strength actually, you know, translate to something bigger. So I don't know. I know I'm getting too deep into the body, gym, rock climbing, how to actually manifest your inner strength and beauty. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think these conversations are important. Um, but yeah. Are they important? I don't know. Who knows? Who says I can't get stoned in booty at the stripper pole? Who says the buffet's old? They kept in containers overnight. And they freeze my beef. Though did they know that I had the queef? Man, Precious was so sweet. And she was my e-harmony meat. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, would I ever marry a stripper? I don't know. Probably not. I don't know why I said that. Um, <laughs> would I ever marry a stripper? Would I ever marry a former stripper? Uh, that's a good question. Hmm. That's an interesting question, Clint. That's an interesting question. Um. <laughs> well, you don't want to be like Joe Smith and find out that you're wife who you're still married to fucks a midget but not that there's anything wrong with fucking you know but you know when you're a six eight former number one draft pick and they're just embarrassing you out there yeah that i'm i don't care what people say it's gonna hit you a little bit different than just if just fuck some normal ass dude like 
it's like, you know, <laughs> I hope people don't want to hear that. It's like when, uh, if your girlfriend, if you're a guy and your girlfriend cheats on you with a woman, like, and she turns less, like, you know, basically Ross and, uh, shit, what was his baby mama's name? Um, <laughs> yeah, Ross saw friends, like him and who, his wife, who he had a kid with, left him for a girl named Susan. Carol. Carol. Um, it was a Christmas Carol. Um, <laughs> and people wonder why Ross is high strong. Like, you know what? You have your wife leave you for a lesbian. And then... And then you are, you know... And then the love of your life finally comes in your life. Like, oh, this can save it. And it takes, like, nine years for you to fucking have a baby with her. Well, nine seasons, you know. It takes nine seasons to have a baby with the love of your life. And she's still... There's a Ross and Rachel, like, we, we're on a break and all, and all this stuff. And you wonder why this man just loses his shit, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it would hit different. But he's got to be like the good guy because, you know, he has a kid with her and stuff. And he can't create a havoc for, you know, Cole Sprouse or Dylan, whoever the fuck it was. I think it was Cole. And um, the sweet life of Ross and Carol and Susan and Rachel. Carol rhymes with Rachel. Damn, Ross. Dress for less. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. I think I'm gonna, yeah, I guess the moral of this whole pod is, is, uh, you know, just, uh, stay off the internet. Don't watch me. Don't watch. Don't listen to no one. It's all just a distraction. All right. So, yeah. All right. I'm gonna end it there. That was episode 251 of the Off of Me Podcast with Clint Nelson. I'm your host, Clint Nelson. Don't forget to like, follow, comment, subscribe to the notification button. Most important, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to suck some titties. Cause goddamn, I gotta shit a brick. <sighs> yeah. Um. So yeah. All right. Just uh, stay safe out there. Enjoy. Enjoy your time. Uh, recording. Trying to record an episode every single day. Doesn't mean I'm posting every day, but I'm really trying to get in the habit of doing this more often. So yeah. All right. Have a great day. Me me. See what I mean? No matter how much I wash this goddamn shirt, can't get these stains out.